So we've talked about adding in, in our students. One thing I haven't talked about is adding in guardians. So when I, we talk about adding guardians, um, it gives us an option to let parents be involved with a particular student. So if a student has, um, has been struggling and the parents want to get involved so they can see what's happening in the class, maybe the kid's just really not organized and uh, isn't using their, their, their planner effectively, this is a way that they can see all the, in, the deadlines in their Google calendars. They can see the materials that can help their child. So it's a great idea, and it also can help you to communicate with your parents. So when we look at that, that screen here, this is still our students tab here. If we hit invite guardians, that's where they can, um, they can be added, the parent's email can be added in. Uh, the parent can only see their child's information. Everybody else shows up as anonymous, all right? Um, but if you have guardians in here and you have a whole list of them, you could email all of your guardians in one hit which might be also helpful, all right? Um, <clears throat> when we start talking about the next thing, which is the About tab. The About tab is uh, where we can put information about our course in, put our links in, we can put in our uh, electronic textbook uh, link, um, that type of information. Um, if you have a lot of information, considering adding a Google site uh, to house your links, and I have some resources for building that as well. So when we we'll look at the About tab, you can add in a, a link. It's pretty simple. If I want to add in more course materials, and it doesn't look like it wants to let me resize at the second. If I, um, if I post in my, in my class website that I had put in earlier, I can do that. It's just taking a second to do so. I can go in and hit add more class materials right here. Um, it's pretty simple. I can add things as attachments. Maybe you've got a, a Word document that you want to attach. Maybe you have a, um, a, or a PDF file that you want to attach. Might be a, um, a bunch of photocopies that you've turned into a, a PDF on the photocopier. Uh, you can attach things uh, to, directly from your Google Drive. You can add, add YouTube clips and you can add other links. All right. The other thing that's nice about the About tab is that you have a Google Calendar built in directly into your site. So if I hit View in Classroom, it'll show things that are coming up. I only have one event in this calendar right now, which is a question that I added into the stream earlier. But then I can go back into my my, uh, my course here and we're on the About tab right now. So that, that's some of the nice things that it does. We also have a Google Drive folder here that, that'll take us directly to our folder that we put materials into as well. <clears throat> um, if you team teach or you have a student teacher, you can also hit this invite teachers button here so you can collaborate with another another teacher. So we've talked about adding in, in our students. One thing I haven't talked about is adding in guardians. So when I we talk about adding guardians, um, it, gives us an option to let parents be involved with a particular student. So if a student has, um, has been struggling and the parents want to get involved so they can see what's happening in the class, maybe the kid's just really not organized and uh, isn't using their, their, their planner effectively, this is a way that they can see all the, in, the deadlines in their Google calendars. They can see the materials that can help their child. So it's a great idea and it also can help you to communicate with your parents. So when we look at that, that screen here, this is still our students tab here. If we hit invite guardians, that's where they can, um, they can be added, the parent's email can be added in. Uh, the parent can only see their child's information. Everybody else shows up as anonymous, all right? Um, but if you have guardians in here and you have a whole list of them, you could email all of your guardians in one hit, which might be also helpful, all right? Um, <clears throat> When we start talking about the next thing, which is 
the About tab. The About tab is uh, where we can put information about our course in, put our links in, we can put in our uh, electronic textbook uh, link, um, that type of information. Um, if you have a lot of information, considering adding a Google site uh, to house your links, and I have some resources for building that as well. So when we look at the About tab, you can add in a, a link. It's pretty simple. If I want to add in more course materials, and it doesn't look like it wants to let me resize at the second. If I, um, if I post in my, in my class website that I had put in earlier, I can do that. It's just taking a second to do so. I can go in and hit add more class materials right here. Um, it's pretty simple. I can add things as attachments. Maybe you've got a, a Word document that you want to attach. Maybe you have a, um, a or a PDF file that you want to attach. Might be a, um, a bunch of photocopies that you've turned into a, a PDF on the photocopier. Uh, you can attach things uh, to, directly from your Google Drive. You can add, add YouTube clips and you can add other links. All right. The other thing that's nice about the About tab is that you have a Google Calendar built in directly into your site. So if I hit View in Classroom, it'll show things that are coming up. I only have one event in this calendar right now, which is a question that I added into the stream earlier. But then I can go back into my, my, uh, my course here, and we're on the About tab right now. So that, that's some of the nice things that it does. We also have a Google Drive folder here that, that'll take us directly to our folder that we put materials into as well. <clears throat> um, if you team teach or you have a student teacher, you can also hit this invite teachers button here. So you can collaborate with another, another teacher. Hi everybody, a um, couple of minor snafus with last night's recording. The microphone wasn't quite right, so I'm sorry, it's really quiet. So that's why I'm re-recording it now. So um, this session will be up and moving and, and um, the recorded lessons uh, section of the website. <clears throat> so last night's ses session was on Google Classroom, which is a great tool, and let's get into it. All right, so Google Classroom is a communication tool for your classroom, helps you share out Google Docs and all kinds of things, helps you generate emails, generate emails to parents. Um, there's a lot of things Google Classroom can do for you. All right, um, so setting up your Google Classroom is a pretty simple process. Um, you go to the little plus button here and hit create class, put in your class details and away you go. What I do recommend is that when you are building your courses that you put them all in, you start with your last course in your schedule first and st end with your your first course of the day. Um, the reason why I say that is because Google doesn't allow you to change around the screen of your different tabs. If you're particular about the order, I recommend you do that. So let's look at that in the website. So this is the screen that I'm talking about. After you build a few set, uh, courses, it doesn't let you move them around really annoying. If you find things annoying about Google Classroom, there's a little button down here that you can actually request and send feedback about something. So I find that annoying, so I could actually write a description about what I think they could do to improve it and send it back to Google. I've already sent that to them a couple times, so I'm going to lay off right now. But if you see something that you want to see change, see what happens and maybe Google will fix it. All right, so that plus button up here, this is where the students can join in with a join code, and this is where you can create classes. All right, I'm gonna jump into one of my classes and start talking about the students tab, um, which is in my slide notes right here. So we're talking about the students tab right now. So it was talking about join codes and things like that. Let's jump back over to Google Classroom here. Um, so in the students tab, I can press the. This is where I can find my join my class code, my join code. Um, I can also reset it or disable it if I need to. All right. Um, 
the invite students by emails right here, they have to be in your address book. So it's kind of a three-step process. One is you have to download your email list from Infinite Campus. Second thing is that you have to add them into your address book in, um, in your Gmail account, and then you can invite them. It's a, a little bit messy and um, not the best way of doing it, but most teachers go with the class code. Just, just suggesting. Now, if I have a particular student I want to email, I can press this button here and I can hit email student. Um, if I want to email multiple students, I can also hit email here and then it'll pop me over into my Gmail account and away we go. If I have a student that has left my course, I can click on that student and I can hit actions and remove. All right. Likewise, if I got a student that's being a bit chatty in the stream and I want to mute them, I think that's what you do to turn their, their notifications off. So let's talk about the stream tab. The stream tab is where the action happens in your Google Classroom. This is where you put your, your assignments, your questions, your polls, all that fun stuff right here. All right. So when we look at the stream tab, um, we create everything pretty much down from this plus button on the lower right corner. If I click on it, I can create announcements, create assignments, create questions, and I can reuse posts that I've already made. So when I create an announcement, um, it gives me these options. All right, I can attach things uh, like I can any, in any of the other uh, sections of the plus uh, that adding to your stream section. So all of them allow you to at attach things. We can create a, a topic so to help them keep organized. So maybe this is about uh, one particular topic in your course. All right. Um, and then you can also share the things in your class. So maybe, uh, maybe my announcement is watch this video before coming to class today all right and then I hit the link and maybe no, no I don't want to add a link I want to add a YouTube video all right so maybe I'm gonna look for cats yeah YouTube videos about cats I should be able to find one all right so here's here's my cat video and um, I can also do one thing that's nice about an announcement I could say I want everybody in my all my classes to watch oh, to watch this thing or I can have maybe one student watch that video. It's up to you. This allows me to differentiate between different users. Maybe I've got different groups of students that might need to see, to see that video. So maybe some don't. Okay. <clears throat> so if I hit post there, um, here's my uh, my video clip, uh, clip, and my students can do that. They can add comments to uh, below. And you can actually turn that function off as well. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But that's adding an announcement. I can't put a deadline on it, but I can do that if I look at creating an assignment. So if I create an assignment, it gives me an option here to it's still I can attach things. I can add a deadline here. So maybe I want that set for uh, next Wednesday. I can actually give it a time. So if I want that to be at 3 p.m., it's at 3 p.m., all right? Um, again, I can add a topic. I can give a title and some instructions. Um, here, I'm gonna add something from my Google Drive. So maybe I want to add in um, some Google Slides. This is the one tricky thing about assignments. I mean, you have to pay attention. If I want everybody to have their own copy of a Google fi file. I need to do this right now before I assign it. As soon as I assign it, I cannot make a copy for each student again. So if I want ev everybody to have their own copy to work on, I hit make a copy for each student. Otherwise, I have to delete the assignment and start again. All right? So it won't let me assign it until I have a name for it and I can put my instructions in there. All right, and then I can hit assign. 
So that's going to create a copy in their Google Drive that they get to work on and it will have their slides with their name after it. All right. Um, and they can turn that, that in. So now it says each student will get a copy. It says that two are not done and things are moving. All right. So the next thing that I can talk about is creating a question. I've made one earlier. So I'm going to look at this one. So here's a question that I have. I can click on the edit button here and I can look at it. Now it gives you two choices when you're, you're making a question. You can either make multiple choice or short answer. I think multiple choice is a bit more interesting. All right. I can attach videos and other things like, like I did. I just have a quick best, uh, best pet. That's what's going on. And students can see the class summary. In the question area, the nice thing that, about that is that they can see a poll at the end of it. Um, so you can use that for checking for understanding, see how many kids actually got it. You can say, well, do, do we all want to see the summary or don't we want to see the summary? So we can check for prior knowledge or we can look for um, their understanding after a unit is finished or maybe a lecture for that day. All right. So if I hit save, that's done already. So those are the big things on the stream tab um, about what you can do. And you can also hit that reuse post button here and you can bring something else back in. So Google Classroom has its own gradebook which is kind of crazy. Um, but the nice part about it is, is that you can, when students turn things in, you can score it right there. They can see what that's worth. And then you can take that and you can move those grades somewhere else. But um, it has its own grade book, which is kind of interesting to look at. All right, so let's go over in the live side and look at it. The, there's only one way that I've found to get to the grade book. And you actually have to have an assignment that's up and moving, all right? So here's an assignment that some people have done or not done. So if I click on the done, not done area, I can go in and I can see the score. So this is a, a question. So it's showing me um, the poll, uh, the answers to the poll that people have done so far. I can actually add a grade in, in here and that will let the student know how many points that they've gotten. They can also click on here. You can change it and say this is only worth two points. And it'll say, oh yeah, that's done. So I'm going to say, all right, you got no points because you haven't answered it. But here, um, this student's already answered it. So, oh wait, that student already actually did, did do it. This is the one that did it. So I'm going to give them two points. And here I can give that. Uh, they didn't do it. So I'm going to say no. Too bad. All right. So in here, I've got my, my grades. All right. If I go over to the gear here, I can copy all my grades to a Google Sheet. I can download all my grades as a... Uh, as a um, uh, something that would open in Microsoft Excel or Apple Numbers, um, or I can, uh, you know, download just this one assignment as a CSV. Um, I like the option of using Google Sheets because then I can move things more easily. But it's all there. All right. If I hit the return button, it returns the assignments back to the student. All right. <clears throat> So that's the, the basics of the gradebook that comes along with uh, Google, uh, Google um, Classroom, all right? <clears throat> so there's my notes in the slides about the gradebook, how to get ac access to it. Um, it doesn't sync with our, our infinite campus, but here's some other things that are interesting. So when we talk about Google Classroom, there are apps that pl plug into Google Classroom. So one is the smartphone apps. Um, students are on their phones anyway. They might as well get their notifications about their assignments on their phone. So they, these pictures here are linked directly to the, the app store or the various app stores for the two major platforms for smartphones. Um, so that they might be able to see those deadlines directly on their phone. Um, you can also use Quizlet with Google Classroom, and there's a video here that you can watch and find out about using Quizlet decks in, in Classroom. Um, you can use Google Forms as a quiz, so if you wanted to actually use your, uh, create a form and put it in, um, this was a video that somebody else had already created about creating a Google Form, building a, a quiz, and then inserting it into Google, Google Classroom. So have a quick look at that. And um, Kaizena is another uh, tool 
that works with Google Classroom that you can give feedback and rubrics directly to students. It's great for when we start talking about standards, standards-based grading. Uh, Kaizena allows you to put all your standards in and uh, create rubrics from the, the standards and uh, give people feedback via video or via sound or just type, uh, type and have a conversation about how they're going on that standard based upon the assignments that they're ta you're talking about. So it's a great tool to look at. I can do a whole session on Kaizena if you guys are interested, um, but that's just a little bit of a, a bit of a look at where we can go with that. So if you have any questions or want to see more things about, about what we can do in Tech Tuesdays, let me know, send me an email, and we can keep moving with things. That is pretty much what I've got to say to you guys today about, uh, about this. Um, again, I'm sorry about the technical snafu, um, but there are some new tools that are going on here. So I've been also adding a tab for research tools about things that you can use to help your, your classes get moving. Um, there's also going to be some more tech tool tutorials. I mentioned earlier that I have a, some tutorials on Google Sites and how to create them. And if you like the session, send me some feedback up here in the upper right corner um, and let me know what's going on. Thank you so much for watching my video and have a great day.